Good morning. So here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be taking the alternator out and rebuilding it. It's a cheaper alternative to just replacing it. There's a guy on eBay that sells a rebuild kit. Includes everything you need, including the bearings. Um, $80. So if you priced them out, you know what they cost. Uh, so first thing you got to do, of course, is unhook the battery. Second thing, you got to remove the radiator hose. You got clip here got a clip over there on your water pump and then there's one going down to your water cooled alternator second thing is to remove the fan clutch now you do make a tool to hold the pulley uh, depending on how long yours has been on there mine hasn't been on there a lot that long you can take a wrench and tap it a little bit it is left-handed thread so you need to turn it left-handed to remove it um, you have to be careful the pulley is plastic and if you try to hold on to it or something like that you will break it so if it doesn't come loose the mechanic taught me years ago if you stick a wrench on it and tap it with a hammer it'll knock most of them loose if it won't come loose that way then you probably need to get a tool for it uh, so we're going to remove those two things and then we're going to move on to what's next Next thing we have to do is remove the air shroud. Now there's two clips, one in each corner, and <clears throat> we have to remove the bleeder valve and this clip holding the reservoir in. Now if you take the top of the air box off, you don't have to take the whole thing out, and the uh, tubing back to your intake, it will allow you enough room to lift this off and move it back out of the way. There's also a hose under here that goes to your reservoir tank. And you need to pop that loose. Once you take that loose from the reservoir tank, this whole shroud cover will just lift out of there. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll move on to the next thing. So I forgot to add, there is, if you look on the fan shroud down here, there's a place here, there's a temperature sensor of some sort. It just clips on there uh, you can either unplug it or just pop the whole sensor off whatever is easier uh, but that does need to be taken loose before you can get the shroud out so the next thing we got to do is remove the belt there's two bolts here that are keeping the tension on it take those loose and remove the belt and unplug it we got a plug up top here and then we got a main terminal wire down there uh, this is a bolt that we have to take out so we remove all that stuff and then we'll move on to see what's next so the next thing we got to do is we got to remove the tensioner pulley and the idler pulley underneath the alternator and it's got this little plastic cap that goes over the front of it and they just pop off each of them have one and you remove, you can see the Torx bolt right here, you remove that, that goes back into the block and the pulley will come off, it'll give you enough room. You do the same thing with the bottom one, just remove that pulley. Uh, you don't have to take the whole assembly off to get to the alternator. But anyway, we do that next and then we'll move on. So everything's loose, the only thing left is there's number 10 bolts that go around the outside of the alternator. We remove those and the alternator will pull out. It may take just a little bit of prying back in here and you know screwdriver something not too hard everything's aluminum but it'll pop right out and should be able to remove it from the car. So we'll do that next. So the next thing we gotta do we gotta get the pulley off. You can see there's a little special star in the middle to hold the shaft and then the nuts on the outside. And what you're supposed to do is actually hold it with a socket and then try to turn the shaft. Uh, and there's a nut right here that needs to come loose. Now I can uh, tell you a little trick, but I'm not responsible if you tear up your pulley. If you take a pipe wrench and you put it on the outside edge here, good and tight, most of the time that nut will come loose. 
or you can buy your special pointed socket. Uh, either way, you know, it, it's not that tight. It's not that hard to get off. So you take the nuts loose and the pulley will just pull right off after you do that. So we're going to do that next. So the next thing we do is we take the, there's four torque screws in the middle. I actually had one of mine strip out, so I had to drill it out. Uh, they're loose. Uh, I have to find something to go back in there. And then there's one on the outside here. Take that one out too. And you dig all this caulking stuff out of there and around this square in here in the middle. And this plastic cover should come off. And we'll take that off and we'll move on to the next thing. So here we go, cover's loose. Some care does need to be taken. You need to take a pick or something and like dig out this caulking stuff all around there. Um, you know, need to work at it slowly. It is just plastic and if you try to just pry on it, it will break. But anyway, you know, use a little bit of care. You don't want to break the pieces. Um, then we need to remove this part here. There's Torx holding that one, so you remove the Torx screws, and there's a wire that goes underneath here, and there's a wire that comes over to here. So anyways, you need to take those Torx out and remove this piece next. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So there's one more Torx to take out here in the middle. There's also, there's actually two of them out here, I think, before I said there was only one. But there's two on the outside that need to be removed. And then there's three more Torx that hold your things here that have to be removed. So remove those next and hopefully the whole plate will come off. Okay, so with the plate removed, the plate will just kind of work off of there. That's our alternator in a nutshell. There's the rear bearing, your windings inside, everything's there. Now, the rear bearing has to be pressed on. There's a piece of plastic that goes over it, but the rear bearing has to be pressed on. Now mine, the bearings are fine. They don't move at all. So I don't think I'm gonna mess with pressing the back one on. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the front one because it's in the, <clears throat> your diode housing itself. But I don't see any reason to even mess with the back one. So, I mean, it depends on what's wrong with yours. If the bearings are bad and it's squealing and making noise, well, then obviously you got to do that. But this actually has to be pressed on. So you have to get a press or take it somewhere and have it pressed. Or if you have a press, press it on there. But anyway, mine's fine. Mine's just not charging. So I'm going to go ahead and set it up. So we're going to put it back together and we'll move on from there. So I clean up real good around here. Just spray a little bit of parts cleaner on a rag and wipe it off. Don't spray it everywhere to get all down inside. Um, and then I just put a thin coat of Forma gasket on here. Just a thin coat just to help the sealing a little bit. And then we place this back on top. Now obviously the wires have to go through the hole where the nut is. And then our screws go back into these things here. Now one other thing, this bearing in the front like I said, I put my new bearing in there. It's technically pressed in. Um, with a rubber mallet sitting on a block of wood, you know, and a little bit of tapping, you can get it in. I mean, if you have a press, great, just press it right in there. But anyway, it, it's not, you know, it's not the end of the world if you don't have a press, you can tap it in. But the back one definitely has to be pressed in. Anyway, we're gonna put the, put the next diode piece on there and we'll move on to the next thing. So my diode plate's on now. I, I stuck the screws in out here to help align a little bit. Right now you kind of want to do yourself a favor and make sure your screw holes are lined up. Everything will go back together so you don't have to take anything back apart. Um, next we want to do is put this on there. Now the wire goes on first, then this. Um, do not put the nut on here because the nut actually goes on top of the plastic piece. So there's one screw here, a couple screws holding it on. You'll see when you take it apart. So anyway, we're going to do that next. So next, we stick our plastic cover on there. Okay. Um, 
it's had all kind of, you got make sure you get it clean all the crap they have used to seal it and reseal it put your nut back on don't forget the uh, there's a spacer for the uh, pulley put your pulley back on and then you would just reverse the process now the thing you got to be careful of is make sure you get all the water all the air bled out of the water lines if not first time you drive it it'll overheat um, so you simply reverse the process putting it back in I hope this helps somebody when you get done you got a voltage meter check it make sure you should have about 14 volts coming out of it if your bat battery light goes out then you probably got it too anyway Subscribe and check some of my other videos. I got more videos on BMW repairs and other things. Hope you have a nice day.